So do me a favor before I call this Muslim, share the link on your social media pages, let people know, hit the like button, pray the Lord if the Lord Jesus is pleased to use this ministry that he doesn't need to bring more viewers and subscribers and be prayed up. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill every one of you and me to glorify Jesus Christ, not to shame Jesus Christ or dishonor Jesus Christ and to enable me to glorify Jesus Christ <clears throat> by destroying Islam, destroying the false prophet Muhammad, destroying all of the Quran and glorifying Jesus Christ by preaching his truth by the power of the Holy Spirit so that Muslims get saved, Muslims get saved and fall of Jesus Christ. So guys, do me a favor, find one of you will be able to find that man's IP because he's using my daughter's picture. So if you guys can go to his channel, because I know one of you guys are in IT, find his IP address because I do have connections with the FBI. And I'm not saying that to say that I do. So if he's in the US, these are terrorists. They're dangerous. They pose a serious threat to the lives of Christians in America because these are the kind of people that will murder you and blow themselves up. So find it, guys. If, uh, if you can, Protestant believer, do that for me. See, they don't know they're playing with fire when they try to mess with my children. They don't know what they're doing. I wish, honestly, the jihadis would invite me, say, look, meet me here at this time, and I will kill you for Allah and his messenger. Guys, please, Muslims, tell me where you're going to be. Invite me. I'll show up. I won't have the police. Try to kill me. Murder me for Allah and his messenger. Because then it's self-defense. But you're not men enough. You don't trust Allah enough, nor do you love Muhammad enough to do that, because you know better. Glory to the trying God. So when you mess with people's family, you're now <clears throat> crossing the line and <clears throat> you're posing a physical threat to harm them and you give us the right to defend ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's see if you're men. Please contact me, give me your address, I'll come. Call my bluff, see if I won't show up. Because then you're going to know who the real men, the real women are. We know Jesus lives, he's almighty. Muhammad is dead, buried under the feet of Jesus, he's burning in hell. And there's not a damn thing you guys can do about it. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. So guys, do me a favor. Share the link on your social media platforms. How you doing, God's girl? Good to see you. And invite more folks, hit the like button. We have a Muslim that reached out to me that said he wants to discuss with me Tawheed. So he reached out to me. If he ends up being a troll, don't worry, we'll turn this into a teaching lesson. Uh, instead of just shutting it down, I'll just do the session on Quranic variants that do change the meaning of the text, Lord Jesus willing. And then Lord willing, tomorrow I have it scheduled. If you check my YouTube channel, I've got it scheduled. Tomorrow I'm going to do part six in the series, Marian Doctrines. Luke 1, 47, saving it from the Protestant misinterpretation, misuse of that passage where Mary says that her soul rejoices and God her savior. I will discuss that because that's the passage that I also misused when I was a Protestant. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on us. May the Lord Jesus save us from error. May the Lord Jesus save us from <clears throat> stumbling and stammering and stuttering. May the Lord Jesus save us from sin. May the Lord Jesus save us from misinterpretation of scripture. May the Lord Jesus flood every one of us in his love, in his peace, in his joy, his compassion and mercy. May the Lord Jesus flood us in his precious blood. May the Lord Jesus cleanse, purify, wash us in his blood. And I pray the Lord Jesus, the Father's heart, the eternal love of the Spirit, does that for our loved ones. May he do that for your loved ones. May he do that for my daughters, my angels, that he will flood us in his living waters, the living waters of the Father, the Holy Spirit, that the Lord Jesus will fill us with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus anoint my mouth, guard my tongue, and I pray he guards your tongues and your mouths and the words of our tongues and our mouths. And may the Lord Jesus never allow us to betray or deny or blaspheme or shame or disown him, even if that means 
that we are imprisoned, beaten, and killed for him. May the Lord Jesus fill us with the Holy Spirit and control us by his Holy Spirit. Constrain us by his Holy Spirit. Restrain us by his Holy Spirit. To offer our bodies as living sacrifices. To offer him the fruit of our lips. To lift up holy hands, sanctified by his Spirit, washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Praising the Lord Jesus. Loving the Lord Jesus. Praying to the Lord Jesus. Trusting the Lord Jesus. Clinging to the Lord Jesus. Living in perfect obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus increase in us more of him in our lives, less of us. May the Lord Jesus beatify us with his beauty, his holiness, his righteousness, his purity, his patience, his self-control, his love and compassion and mercy, his graciousness. So that everything we do and say, we will reflect the glory and beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus fill my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs and chest with the breath of life with life from the Lord and giver of life, his eternal spirit, the spirit of his father. May the Lord Jesus strengthen my voice, invigorate my voice to speak with passion, with clarity, clearly with power. May the Lord Jesus use my voice, sanctified by spirit to bless you, his brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the living God, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, born of the spirit. And I pray that I'm born of the spirit and I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that for our loved ones, my daughters, that they, they all belong to Jesus Christ, born of the spirit, the eternal spirit of the father and the son. May the Lord Jesus save me from stammering, stuttering, from error and confusion and perfect my ability to recall the scriptures perfectly and to recite those scriptures until they become second nature. May the Lord Jesus empower us to know the scriptures. To obey those scriptures, to recite, recall those scriptures, to meditate on those scriptures, to love those scriptures, to proclaim those scriptures without shame, without compromise, without watering down the scriptures. Because the scriptures are the voice of the Lord Jesus, the shepherd to his flock, to his church, to his bride. And I pray we are part of that flock, that church and bride. May the Lord Jesus enable me with the Holy Spirit to interpret the scriptures and things related to Islam perfectly with the wisdom and knowledge, understanding from the spirit and illuminate your hearts and minds to understand. May the Lord Jesus bless the internet connection, the audio visual qualities and save us from satanic temptation and distractions. May the Lord Jesus rebuke Satan, shield us against Satan by his precious blood. May the Lord Jesus give us his flesh and his blood for our food because his flesh is true food. His blood is true drink. May the Lord Jesus shield our loved ones by his blood. It enables us to hate Satan with perfect hatred, to resist Satan with perfect resistance, and submit to the Lord Jesus with perfect submission. Because by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors to crucify our flesh and conquer Satan under our feet by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus save us, save me from my sinful lusts and my passions, from our flesh and the fruits of our flesh, and fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, with light from the Holy Spirit to walk in union with the spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. May he destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego, gossip, slander. May the Lord Jesus never allow us to prostitute ourselves for fame, for fortune, for numbers or money, but help us to be content, not to be enslaved to fame or attention or money, but to be enslaved to him and trust in him because he is real. He is reality. He is our reality. Please, Lord Jesus, have your way. And Lord Jesus, illuminate this Muslim to see your truth and beauty, to escape Islam. Only you can set him free. I can't do it. Help me not to shame you or cause anyone to stumble and do not allow them to cause me to stumble. And Lord Jesus, almighty son of God, anyone who rises to harm our innocent loved ones like my daughters, teach them your fear, crush their mouths, strike them with your holy fear to know that you are God and you will not be mocked and your little ones will not be harmed. We love you, son of God. Give us the power to love you perfectly and not to be lip service. Save us from hypocrisy. Please, son of God, have your way in your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Let me just close the door. We're going to call this young man. And again, if he's one of these guys that's just playing games, we'll just do chronic variants. So we'll make it a session. Nonetheless, I'll change the title. He reached out to me early in the morning. So I don't know if he's serious. If he's not serious, that's okay. We'll make the most of it since I'm already doing a live stream and I may not be able to do one later on, Lord willing. So we'll see. Now, let's do the Lord's Prayer as the Didachi, Didache, the Daskalia, this first century manual, right? The first century manual tells us that the practice of the apostolic churches 
the practice of the apostolic churches, the churches established by the apostles, by the Holy Spirit. This document is written in the time of the apostles, right? Or at least the time of their disciples, the eyewitnesses, the apostles, and it's been translated in English. The Didache, Didache, Didache says that we need to say the Lord's Prayer three times a day, obviously in honor of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and as a way of spiritual discipline. The Bible likens our Christian walk as spiritual discipline. It likens it to a race. It likens it to a boxer who's training for a boxing match. It likens it to soldiers who are in the military. In other words, spiritual discipline is likened to physical discipline in that much like you need to exercise physically and eat right to be physically fit for war, for competition, for a marathon, we must be spiritually fit for the spiritual battle, for the spiritual race, and finish it by the power of the Spirit. So our spiritual exercises would be intense prayer, fasting, Bible meditation, Bible recitation, Bible application, living out the word, fellowship with brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus Christ, being part of a healthy church, attending the church and taking Eucharist. These are our spiritual disciplines. So let us exercise our spiritual muscles to become lions and lionesses for the glory of Jesus Christ. So in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. So welcome everyone. Lord bless you. This guy's excited to get destroyed, so let's do it. So Protestant believer, thank you for joining us, brother. Lord bless you. He's the one who posts verses. So this guy is excited to get destroyed. So let's do it. Let's call it. Let's see. Now, he may be just a mocker who's going to mock me and insult me. So we'll just block him and we'll begin. We'll talk about something else. So let's see. Let's see how serious it is. Because he reached out to me. So I don't know if he's a fake. We'll see. Let's see. Hello? Hello? Yep. Sound like I'm up All right, well, tell people who you are. They don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. So, your name is Go Gauras Edrun Harris? Well, that's Edrun Harris, yeah. I uh, came to discuss Tawheed. Okay, before you discuss Tawheed, make sure your sound quality is good. Be patient. I know as a Muslim, you need to be a little more patient. Is it good? Hopefully. So, were you born into a Muslim home or did you convert? No, I was born. Oh, born Muslim, okay. So now, so I can know what you believe about Tawheed. Do you subscribe to Salafism? Uh, I am kind of neutral. However, most of my uh, beliefs when it comes to the attributes of Allah are uh, identical to the Salafi beliefs. Okay, good. That's uh, because I needed to know that so that I don't attack straw man. So you do believe Allah has a shin, has a foot, has a waist, have eyes and hands, right? Uh, like I said, most of my beliefs are uh, identical. So does Allah have hands? Beliefs. Since we're talking about Tawheed, does Allah have hands? Yeah, he has uh, two hands, yeah. He has two hands? What are they? Two right hands? They or are... right or left hand? Right, but when it when it says right, it means uh, that they are blessed. How That's do you know what it means that? You, you, just, you just did what the Salafis tell you not to do. You just... The te- we are, can you show me where your prophet and the sinner said it means they are blessed? <laughs> That's what the Salafis say. <laughs> okay, can you show me? This is Salaf- what he believes. Uh, friend, if you laugh, I'm going to make fun of your prophet. So respect yourself. No, show me but, no but wait. Can, show can me. we start on can a you debate? Show me, yeah, yeah. Can you show me where your prophet said the reason why he has to have, to have two right hands is because it means they're blessed? Show that to me. Like I said, this is the Salafi belief. What, I, what, do what you want me to repeat to it the third it's not time? My problem. Okay, do you want me to repeat it the third time? I don't care what people tell you. You made a claim. You said you're ready to debate me. Prove no, your claim. No, that's what the Salafis say. Okay, give me the reference that. from the Sunnah where it says that two right hands means it's because they're blessed. Because the right side is, is blessed. Okay, now I'm going to give you a hadith from Muslim that says Allah has a left hand. So that means he's cursed? 
Yeah, okay, no problem. Can we talk about the That's so heat. We're talking about the Sifat I'm, I'm, of Allah. I'm not talking about Jesus. You said Jesus is God's word. Can no, no, talk about hold Jesus? on. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Do you want me to repeat your... I'm going to block you. I don't you. have much... Okay, I'm going to block you. Get out of here. I'm blocking you because I'm going to read Why? your note. Because you just said you want to talk about Tawheed. We are talking about Tawheed. I know you're scared because I'm you don't scared. have... Okay, do you, do you think Allah is real? Then we're talking about Tawheed. Listen okay, hold, carefully. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't have much knowledge when it comes to the attributes of Allah. So then why did you uh, contact me? Okay, why because did I'm you saying, contact me? Stop I'm talking saying, over me. I'm going to hang up on you. Listen. Why did you contact me and say you wanted to debate Tohi? Here, let me read it. Here you go. Because you... Because oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me read. Hello, I'd like to have a debate on Tawheed. I'm a Muslim. I've been prepared for this debate as well with a lot of arguments. So if you'd let me finish every time I speak, it would be wonderful. You didn't mention Jesus being the word of God. You said Tawheed. So why are you running now? Because there's many things you said about the Quran being eternal, coming as a okay. man. Or just but did you say that in the word. comment section? Sorry? Let me repeat what you said in the comment section because you're a waste of time now. Let me repeat your words. Hello, I'd like to have a debate on Tawheed. I'm a Muslim. I've been prepared for this debate as well with a lot of arguments. So if you'd let me finish every time I speak, it would be wonderful. You did not specify Jesus as the word of God. So I'm talking about Tawheed. Why are you running? Okay, so, so then why are you uh, picking the topic first? Why because can I Tawheed first? has to do with Allah and the sifat of Allah are about his nature, which is part of Tawheed. What don't you get? Because you made claims against Tawheed. This is not one of the okay. claims you made. Yes, I did. I talk about Allah being a grotesque monster because if he has hands and a shin. Oh, Allah. Okay. First of all, so, do you want me to hang up on you? God. I'm going to count of five. I'm going to hang up because you're wasting my time. Are you going to listen? Bro, I, I, I want to debate. I want to debate. debate. Two. We are debating. Here's the hadith from Muslim. Here's the hadith from Muslim. Hold on. Okay, here you go. Read it for us. Here you go. Hold on. Yeah. Don't run from Tawheed, man. We'll talk about the Quran and Jesus. Just be patient. Here it is. I give you the link. Read it for me. You, you, you read it yourself. I'm not your slave. Uh, well, you are the slave of Satan and your prophet is the son of the devil. If you're not going to read it, I'm going to block you. You wasting my time? I'm going to block you. You don't read it? Get out of here. I'm going to hang up and block you. Allah, Allah would fall to heaven some day of judgment and then he would place on his right hand and say, I am the Lord. Where are the haughty and where are the proud today? He would fold the earth on the left hand and say, I am Lord. Where are the haughty and where are the proud today? Who's left hand? God's left hand. But you just said Allah has two right hands. It means blessed. So now that he has a left hand, that means he's cursed? No. So now, how many it, hands does Allah have? It, it just means the hand on the left side. So the, the right hand is on the left side now? It's not on the right side? No, no, no. The, for, for example, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to compare God to humans, but... You don't need have, to compare it to humans. I'm asking you a simple question. If he has two we, right we hands... Have, we have a hand on the, on the left side of our body, and we have a hand on the right side of our body. Oh, so but you said Allah has two the right hands. hands. But wait, the you said on, Allah has two right hands. So one of the right hands is on yeah, the left side? I'm going to explain the hand okay, on, the, on, the, on the left side. Don't do that weird. It's, it's right. It's right. Oh, so wait. I just want to repeat what you said so everyone gets the beauty of Islam. So Allah has two right hands, but one of those right hands is on the left. Yes. Okay, good. All right, perfect. This now, is the Salafi belief. Yeah, okay. So the Salafi believes. To, uh, wait, hold on. Let me repeat. You're being the patient, man. So everyone can understand what you believe. So guys, you heard what he said. Allah has two right hands, but one of the right hands are on the left, but it's not a left hand, it's a right hand on the left side. Okay, that makes yes. sense. Okay, good. Now, what about Jesus and the word? Uh, can you- Why is it Jesus? in the background I can hear this lady screaming? What's going on? Hold on, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, can, you, can you show me proof Jesus is God's word? And, yes, uh, go to chapter four, it? Surah Nisa. read it for me. Yeah. And okay, don't make, no don't interpret it because chapter 3 verse 7 says only Allah knows its meaning. So go to chapter 4 verse 171. No problem. Yeah. And I hope you can see my screen. Do you see this here, what I have? No, I'm searching on Google. Okay, Google it. No, I'm saying, okay, you want me to give you a cron browser so you can look at? Hold on, let me get your cron. I thought you said you're prepared for this, but it's okay. You want me to give you a cron browser and make it easy for you? Yeah, sure. Okay, hold on. There you go. Here it is. Go here, and then you can click on the verses. Here you go. Here it is. 
put in 4171. If worse comes to worse, if it's going to take you a long time. Is that a dog barking in the back? No. What was that noise? <laughs> it's not a dog. Man. What is it, dude? Why are you laughing? Because you know it's I haram. I don't know. It's not a dog. Well, why it's not a dog? Okay, well, you know it's haram to have a dog in the house, right? I know, I know. Okay, good, good. You, you definitely don't have a black dog, right? No, no, no. Why are you laughing, man? I'm quoting the sunnah of your prophet. You're laughing at the sunnah? Stuck for Allah. Okay, How is it uh, old people off the book. Commit no excess in your religion, nor say, nor nor say of God aught but the truth. Christ, the Son of Mary, was an apostle of God, and His word, which He bestowed on Mary, and a spirit proceeding from Him. So believe in God and His apostles. Say not three. Desist. It is better for you, for God is one. Glory be to Him, for having for above having a son. To Him belongs all things in the heavens and on earth and and of his god as a disposal of affairs okay you ask me where yes. does it where is jesus called the word of god it's right here kalimatuhu you want me to give you the yeah, hadith the, can i give yeah, you the hadith the, where your prophet calls him kalimat allah ruh allah yeah hold on but this this means that jesus is there, there's two interpretations possible that jesus is either a word from god or the word which means all words okay but it says you, karimatuhu. it doesn't say a word it means the word of him which means the word of allah this no, is why no it you want me to give you the head so you're not listening it doesn't say hold on hold on Let yes it does it karimatuhu. there's two interpretations either a word or okay a word. your prophet and that he called him karimat allah translate what karimat allah means Word of God. The okay, God's so word. okay, so you asked me where Jesus called the word of God. I just gave it to you. So what's your next question? No, what did it say that, that? That it doesn't need to. When you say Karimatuhu, the word of him, the word of who? If I if I have eight pens, Karimatuhu. It doesn't matter if how I, many words you have. Pens, Are I you talking over me? I'm gonna block you. you. Five, four. Yeah. Talking over me is not gonna make you prove your case. Listen. But you're talking. Okay, Even ahead. if you say there are eight words, Jesus is still the word of Allah. I don't care if there's 20 words. You ask me, where does it say Jesus is the word of Allah? I showed you. So what's your next objection? Nowhere, nowhere can you show me where it says he's... Yes, he's, I just said, karimatuhu, karimat His Allah. can also refer to eight. Five, four. Is it refers to Three. who? Two? Okay. Let's make the Quran... Uh, okay, wait, wait, say, it refers to who? What? Refers to who? It can also refer to who? What do you mean? You said this also refers to somebody. Who? Who's that somebody? Uh, I can't remember. Okay. But let's go to the Quran in chapter 3, verse 45. It says Jesus is a yeah. word from Karimat God. Min hu. I know. Yeah, a word from God. Okay. What does it... Did you understand what I said? Yes. If he's a word yeah. from God, he's still the word of God. The Quran is a word from Allah. It's the word of Allah. Is the Quran the only word of Allah? Is the Quran? Is the Quran? Yes. The, your prophet said, Karim, is your prophet a lying bastard when he says, Karim, Allah? He didn't say the word El in Arabic. Okay, means, you don't need to always say El to make it specific that this word belongs to Allah. That's all Karimat Allah means, the word that belongs to Allah. Is he the word that belongs to Allah that came from Allah? Yes or no? Let's make the Quran the family. I'm going to block you because you're wasting my time. Is Jesus the word from Allah? Five, four, okay, bye-bye. Go and look your question. Okay, then answer the question because you're talking over me. I don't have time for kids. Yeah, okay. Is Jesus the word that belongs to Allah and from Allah, yes or no? He's a word from him. Okay, whether a word or the word or many words, what does it mean, stone kisser? I'm going to explain what I'm going to explain to you. You're laughing like ah, a demon, like your prophet. Let me explain. You got five seconds before I hang up okay, on Muhammad. Okay, okay. billah by Allah, I will explain. 14 okay. verses later in verse 45, it says, Allah said to Jesus, be. This is what the one word is for. No, he didn't. To. He didn't say be. He and did. he misquoted it. You misquoted 359. So here's my challenge to you. Show me where in your Quran, Allah created Adam by saying be to him. Go to 38 of the Quran, 71 to 75. See, I'm going to show you your Quran is full of lies. Go to chapter 38, verses 71 to 75. You even misquoted chapter 3, verse 59. You think I'm like your prophet, I don't know the Quran. No, no, no. Go no, to 38, 59, 71 to 75. Go. Uh, hold on. 
Because you're not letting me speak. Oh, no, no, because no. you are tap dancing like your prophet. He was a good ballet dancer. Go to 38, 71 to 75. Let me see. Hold on. Can we go to verse 59? Can you go Sorry. to 38, 71, 75? I'm getting tired of you, dude. Go there and read it. I see. You are so scared to let me yeah, speak. I okay. swear. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm okay. Gonna go All right, here. Let me block you, and I'm going to now piss on No, no, no. no I'm going to go there. Shut I'm up, gonna, you I'm stupid gonna go dog. Get the hell out of here. There you go. All right. There you go, guys. Waste of time, huh? There you go. There's another dog I need to muscle like the shell muscle is muscle. Your mother was beautiful. Pick up. Let me use all the sport documents to show you that your prophet is a bastard from hell. They're a waste of time. They're kids. Son of Aaron, the guy's too stupid to understand Arabic grammar. That Kedima is defined by Allah, making it definite. You're going to talk to this guy about Arabic grammar? He doesn't even know English. Let me try this guy again. Let's see if he's going to listen. Sandro, stop sending me messages, Sandro. I'm going to block you, dude, from, from Skype. Let's try it again. Let's see if this guy's going to pick up. I know, son of Aaron, the guy doesn't understand. Like, when you say Beit Allah, it means the house of Allah, not a house of Allah. I know. But the guy, the guy doesn't know English, let alone, you know. Let me see. Banjo, Skype me again, I'm going to block you, dude. Now the car won't pick up. All right, guys, sorry. See the guy? You see, he's laughing like a demon. Sorry about that, guys. It's, it was a waste of time. Anyway, we'll talk about more productive things. All right, so everyone with me there? The dude thinks he's going to go to 359. I'm not prepared for 359. He doesn't know I know the Quran better than his prophet. All right, but anyway, let's try it again. Okay, do you want me to hang up on you or are you going to try now? Okay, hold on, bro. I please, I beg you. Just I want to, dude. Oh, I'm gonna count a five again. You're wasting my time. Go to 38, okay. 71, and 75. I know Don't 350. Wait. Let me recite 359 for you because I know the Quran better than your God and His Prophet. Yeah. Okay, the similitude ahead. of Jesus before Allah is like that of Adam. When we yeah. created from dust, and He said, "Be," and He is. I know your verse. I'm gonna bury that verse by going to 38. 71 to 75. You're not as smart as you think. Go to 38, okay. 71 to 75. Okay, no problem. My goodness. 38. Yeah. No I'm problem, telling no you, problem. I know the verse. Listen better than you bark, and you're going to understand well, I, the argument. Okay, no problem. I promise you, you're going to lose the debate. I promise, I promise you. you, I'm going to bury Muhammad, and I'll piss on him. How about that? I promise. I'll piss on your false god, bro. Okay, well, my, well, well you can't, me. because Muhammad, the whore, said he yeah, believed yeah, okay, in my no god. Problem. Your whore, Muhammad, said he believed in my god. So okay, I'm going to no piss problem. on him. So you just, wait, wait, this, 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 chapter 2946 says your God and my God is the same. You just said you're going to piss on Allah, on Allah and your no, prophet. Go to 38, 71, 75. Okay, no problem. Remember, oh prophet. Remember, we're going to piss on your God because you said you're going to piss on mine, right? <laughs> okay, let me read it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Does that what, does she did to your mother? They were laughing at her when they did this. You stupid bastard whore. Okay, let me read it. 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 Stupid whore. You saw that laugh, right? Good, it's recorded. Okay. Let's call this guy. They're manifesting, guys.
His name is Gauras Ibn al Harris. G A W R A S I B N U L H A R I S. Gauras Ibn al Harris. His mother made the Shia famous in Iran. You heard he said he's going to piss on Allah. You heard he said he's going to piss on Allah, right? Because Muhammad said, My God is his God. So he just said, Gauras. Ibn al Harris said he's going to piss on Allah like I piss on Muhammad. That's what happened to Muhammad when the demon raped him. And that's what the Shia did when they were doing muta with his mother. Right? Did you hear that laugh? That's exactly what Muhammad squealed when the demon raped and molested him in the cave because Muhammad is a dirty whore and that's exactly how the Shia laughed when they did muta with Gauras Ibn Harris's mother <laughs> no you're not going to get paid for muta <laughs> and for the record Gauras Ibn Harris said he's going to piss on Allah his God because Muhammad said my God is his God so when he said he's going to piss quote unquote on my false God and I agree Allah is a false God, yet Muhammad thought his false God was my God. So you're right. You and I will bis both piss on Muhammad's false God, Allah. So thank you, Gauras, for agreeing that you and I are going to piss on the false God, Allah of the Quran, Muhammad's God, the one whom that demon molested like he molested you. Take beer, Piccolo. All right, guys, so much for this. Now we can go into destroying the Quran. This is what we got to deal with, folks. These are the demons that are in the West. Okay. That are in the West manifesting. These are the ones that if they have the upper power, they're going to try to rape your women, rape your women, and enslave your children and defile little girls because of their bastard Muhammad. So there you go. Adu, is that what the Shia did when they were doing muta with your mother? Your mommy's afraid of muta. But thank you, Adu, for saying, you will piss on Allah of the Quran as I piss on Muhammad. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So guys, can we now segue into something else? I am, I don't think Jesus. Folks, you're going to have to pray Jesus Christ Almighty pours out a spirit in a mighty way to save these Muslims because if the Lord Jesus tarries and Muslims increase, they're going to be your nightmare in the West. They're going to be raping your women, your mothers, your wives, your sisters, your daughters. They're going to be <clears throat> spreading pedophilia like cancer, taking young premature girls and molesting them for Allah and his messenger. They're going to be beheading your men and enslaving your children. Folks, this is what's going to happen if Jesus tarries. So you need to be crying out to the Lord Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit and embolden you spiritually. And if need be, you're going to have to be ready to protect your lands, your properties, and your families. Because the Bible does not condemn protecting your lands and your families through military means we don't kill people who don't accept the gospel of jesus christ i don't murder someone because he doesn't accept the gospel but god gives me every right to bear arms and protect the life of the innocents my family my children my land when you have women raping women hoarding whoring murdering jihadis like Muhammad, that bastard, coming to try to murder you and rape your women and children. You guys are in very sad shape. You're in trouble, folks. You need to wake up, church. Let me tell you what God does. He's done it in the past. In the past, when his covenant people, and when his covenant people, Israel, failed to honor God, but chased after the gods and goddesses of the nations, God would then allow the pagan nations whether the egyptians or the babylonians and assyrians to attack the land of israel enslave them murder their young men 
raped their women, slaved their children. God didn't make them do it. God allowed them because it's God who constrains, God who controls the evil, wicked, satanic hearts of the vessels of Satan. But when you anger God, he removes his hand of protection and allows them to then carry out their wicked desires on you because you do not fear God and want to have nothing to do with God. And hence, in history, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, and others slaughtering the Israelites were at that time were God's people. So the same God yesterday, today, and forever, he does not change. He will do to any nation that claims to be Christian and names themselves after Jesus, what he did to Israel in the Old Testament. He will remove his hand of protection and allow these jihadi demons, these dogs of Muhammad, these women raping, women whoring, murderers, to come upon your lands and carry out their demonic lusts. If you don't get right and you don't turn to God and you don't fear God and you don't repent and cry out for revival and healing upon your lands. Okay? It's happening. It's happening. In fact, proof of it is, yes, bring Halal Homer, Bilal, before I piss on your prophet. Here's my Skype, Bilal. Tell Halal Homer, I'm going to make him kiss Mark Simpson. Here it is, Benny underscore Malik 3. Tell Halal Homer, he is a spiritual whore like Muhammad, and he doesn't have the guts to call me and debate me. So go ahead, Bilal, call him, say my Skype is open. Right? Here you have Russia that was Orthodox, and the Ukraine they are Orthodox. Now look what's happening. Because when a nation turns their back on God, a nation that was known for being Christian, because Russia was Orthodox, and they turn their back on God and embrace an ideology that's alien to the kingdom of Christ, this is what happens. Right? In fact, did you know what some Christians said about Islam? If you read some of the Christian sources, the early sources about the expansion of Islam, some Christians saw this as God's judgment on a divided church because the church was so divided and fighting among themselves and because of divisions that God allowed Islam to spread as a tool of judgment on a divided church. That's how some early Christian writers viewed the expansion of Islam. So folks, what are you going to do about it? What are you guys going to do about it? Oh yeah, I choose Jesus. I have a book, how the Eastern branch of Christianity viewed the expansion of Islam. I have a book in my library, Lord willing, I may do sessions and read some of these earlier works by Eastern Christians in the East, meaning the Middle East, and what they said about the expansion of Islam. And they saw Islam either as God's tool of delivering them from the oppression of their Christian brothers who had alienated them and oppressed them, or as God's judgment on the church as a whole, because the church was divided, split among themselves and fighting amongst themselves. I'll do it, yeah, let me show you the book. Hold on, let me show you what the book is. I have the book in my library. Let me find it. See, first let me look for it and see if it's here. I'll do it for you guys, for your benefit. But guys, what am I trying to say? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He will deal with his people the same way consistently. So if his people are righteous and in submission to his covenant, he will bless them and preserve them. But if his people stray from his covenant, and turn away from his righteous commands and justify sin, then he'll remove his hand of protection and blessing and restraint and allow the tools of Satan, the pagans and heathens like these Mohammedan whores to come and impose their will upon us as a way of God, disciplining us and teaching us to fear the Lord. But hold on, let me find the book. It's in my library. Let me just find it so I can show you what the book is. So that's why in Europe, Islam is spreading like cancer. I hope you can hear me as I look for the book. 
because Europe claimed to be a Christian nation, turned their back against God, and some of those blasphemous, wicked, destructive teachings against God and the Bible came out of Europe, specifically Germany, where they attacked the Bible as being full of errors and contradictions, myths, resulting in the destruction of people's faiths. So now look at Europe. Churches empty, being bought by Muslims, right? Because they turned their back on God, so God has turned his back on them. God is faithful. He'll never leave nor forsake you. But if you turn your back on God, then God will turn his back on you because God does not impose his love on you. He wants you to accept his love freely. So is this his demon again? Let's see. So I'm looking for the book. So give me a second, guys. We got, we got oh, I get this guy again. Hey, it's that uh, demon, Garwas. Should I give this demon another chance? Or should I block him? What do you guys want? Should I give this demon, this this uh, Muhammad and Horn, another chance? Because you know he's just going to mock. Should I give him another chance? Look, he's manifesting like a demon, like a whore. Like a spiritual whore, you see? All right, one more time. I know the demon that raped your father. Hey, debate with me. Don't hang up. Don't be scared. Let me talk. Okay. Debate with me. You want me to hang up on you? Because you're telling me I'm scared. I'm not. I'm going to piss on your prophet again. So are you going to answer questions? Okay, hold on. Are you going to answer let's questions? Let's go to verse 59. Are you going to answer questions? Or I'm going to block you like Jesus blocked Muhammad in hell? Yes, I will. No problem. Okay. Let, let, go to 38. Go to so uh, we already read 359, you stone licker. No, go to you didn't read it. Five. Four, back, three, yes, chapter, let me repeat it again, because I know you don't know the Quran. It says, and the likeness or similitude of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam, whom he created from dust and said, be, and he is. Which part of that verse wasn't clear when I first recited it to you? Oh, so my apologies, I didn't. Okay, so go to 38 now, 71 and 75. Okay, no problem. Okay. Don't waste I don't my time, dude. We have to go there. Go to 38, 71, and 75, because I'm going to show you the Quran buries itself. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, read so, it. So, so, so go to 38, press. Okay, just go to, dude, see, you're talking again. Can okay, you go no to 38, problem. read your Quran, dude? If you want to have a discussion, well, if not, I'm going to block you, dude, and stop stalking me, man. I know I live in your head, rent free. Stop stalking me. Go there, read it, slowly. Uh, remember, O oh Prophet, when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create a human being from clay. So when I Holy fashioned him and, and had a, what? Read it slow, not too fast, so they can hear you. So when I have fashioned him and had a spirit of my own creation, breathe in, into him, fall down in prostration to him. So the angels prostrated altogether, but not Iblis who acted arrogantly became unfaithful. Allah asked, O oh, Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to what I created with my own hands? Did you just become proud or have you always been arrogant? There you go. Okay, now, the Quran says, Allah said to Adam, be, and he was. But according to the Quran, chapter 16, verse 40, Allah said to every creation, be, and it was. But here, he says to Satan that he created Adam with his own hand. So can you show me where Allah said to Adam, be? Here it says he created him with his own hand. Uh, can I ask you why is this relevant or uh, connected so here to you go again. Islam? Are you friend are you wasting my time you no, tried I'm, I'm, to quote was... you tried to quote 359 to show that jesus yeah. is like adam when he's not because jesus wasn't created from dust he came down into mary's womb and secondly allah did not say to adam b he just told satan that i created adam with my hand but according to 1640 everything was created by allah's kun so that means yeah. if adam was created by allah's kun then Satan yeah. was created the same way Adam was. So why did they, your God Allah say, you did not bow down to that which I created with my hands? Because here it is not addressing the full creation story and you are also the second. You're argument. not answering the question. Did Allah I, I, create, I'm wait, did Allah question. create Satan by the word kun? 1640, go to 1640, read it. 1614. 40. Okay. Whenever we will 
uh, whenever we do will something, we have to do no more than say be, and it is. We say more than be? What? Yeah. No, that's not what it says. Hold on. We don't say more, more than be. Indeed, our word to a thing when we intend it is, but what that we say to it, be, and it is. So when Allah willed for Satan to be, what did he say to create Satan? Uh, according to this verse, kun. Okay, so Adam and Satan were both created by the word kun, right? Uh, Adam is, but Satan, I don't know. Probably wait, wait, so you mean, how does, uh, friend, 1640 says, whenever Allah wants something to be, to exist, he says to it be, kun. Did Allah want can, Satan to exist? You can also say all the angels and... Uh, well, like, you're proving my be. point. Then there's no difference between the way Adam was created and Satan was created. So why did Allah say to Satan, why didn't you bow down to Adam whom I created with my hands? Because that shows that Adam was not created by B, he was created by Allah's hands. Now fix your noise in the background. So you're not answering the question, that's why you're a waste of time. Ah, and you're laughing okay, again. Hey, you scared. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, let me talk. The reason Allah gave Jesus the, the title, a word for name. That's not what I asked you. See, you changed the subject again. Let no, me... you did. We're talking about Jesus. No, we're talking about 359 and how Allah did not create Adam by the word B. No, we're talking about the heat. Okay. Yeah. So you guys stupider than Muhammad. There you go. The guy's stupider than Muhammad. Okay. I swear, wallahi, wallahi. Baloney, wallahi. I wanna, I'm going to defeat you, wallahi. I want to piss on Allah, Muhammad's God. Yeah, you're doing a good job pissing on Allah, Muhammad's God. The guys, you're wasting your time. Guys, you're, you're okay? We're just warming up. Okay. Let me find that book for you guys. Just give me a second, brother. Unless it's in my car. I think it's in my car. I think it's in my car. Anyway, I'll... I'll I'll, I'll show you the book later. And there you'll see. So what's my point? This is what we're up against. This is what we're up against. This is Islam. If the nations that profess to be Christian do not turn back to Jesus and repent, Islam will spread like cancer until the Lord Jesus returns. And it's going to be a very dark, bleak world for the West. Already in Europe, it's pretty much gone. Muslims are buying up abandoned churches and they're imposing their rules wherever they go. There are certain places in England that Muslims have taken over so completely, you can't even enter those places. And this is God's judgment. When you turn your back on God, assault God and blaspheme his word, he removes his hand of protection and allows Satan's demons and human instruments to spread havoc on these places. And one of the greatest insults, one of the greatest insults is when you have Western women, Western women professing to be Christian, going out with Muslim men and having sex with them because in their mind, they think it's no big deal you know, everyone is having sex. Sex before marriage is okay. And what's the big deal if I have sex with a Muslim? Well, two problems right there. Number one, no sex before marriage. That is fornication. May God save us from that and give me the power to practice what I preach. Never touch a woman unless you're married. Never touch a man unless you're married validly in the eyes of God. But number two, Muslims see it as a victory when they sleep with Western women, especially blonde women who they associate with Christianity because they take this as a victory for Allah and his messenger that we have dishonored, we have deflowered, we have shamed the women of Christians, the Christian women. So you women who have been dating Muslim men, I pray you've repented and you've come Full, full circle and turn to God and ask God to forgive you. And you women who are with Muslim men, shame on you, repent. You are cheapening the blood of Jesus, allowing the honor of Christ to be 
dishonor because the Muslim sees you as a Christian woman and every time a Muslim sleeps with you, he thinks he is <clears throat> humiliating, disgracing, and dishonoring Christianity. Wicked, sad. This is why it really hurts and upsets and angers me when I hear <clears throat> Christian women having Muslim boyfriends and having sex with them when they should not have sex before marriage or when Muslim men marry Christian women because the Christian women thought it was okay. Now, that doesn't mean you've committed the unforgivable sin. No. If you turn to God and cry out to God and ask the Lord Jesus to have mercy on you and wash in his blood and the spirit to fill you, you will be forgiven, but turn away from that sin and never repeat that sin again. Now, there are some sisters who are married to Muslim men. Now they realize that was a mistake, but that's okay because now that you're married and some of you may have children with them, cry out to God night and day that the Lord Jesus will save your children from Islam and cry out to God night and day that the Lord Jesus will use your piety, your humbleness, your love for Jesus to penetrate the heart of your Muslim husband to see the difference between someone who follows Jesus and someone who, someone who follows this filth Muhammad and be moved by your piety and humility to turn to Jesus Christ. Okay? In fact, let me show you something that I posted today and we're gonna begin. Pray in Jesus' name that I'm not a distraction to my neighbors. Let me show you something that I just posted on my channel. So I'm gonna show you on my phone. Let me show you something. Okay. Okay, here, let's go to community. Here you go. Watch this. Let me see. Let me know if you can see this. Okay, let's see. Watch here. It's so far. Tell me if you can see this. If it opens up. I hope it does. No, it doesn't open. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, watch this. Watch. Watch. This is in Pakistan. Pakistan. Folks, this is Islam. If it takes over the West. Watch. Western women, Christian women, watch. This is Islam. A group of men ganged up on a Muslim woman, one of their own, a Muslim woman, they beat her. You see that? Western woman, Christian woman, they're beating a Muslim woman. They're beating one of their own. What do you think they're going to do to you? It's in my community channel. I gave you the link to the video on Twitter. Okay, one more time. Watch it again so it can sink in. This is Islam. This is Islam. Now, this is one of their own, a Muslim woman, and they're beating her like a dog. What do you think they're going to do to you, non Muslim women? I'm 
looking at what this brother just commented. Even though his comment was deleted. Okay. He goes, my sister would F him up. All right. Okay. This is what's going to take place and is taking place. And it's already happening in the West. This is why one of my pet peeves that angers me and disgusts me is when I hear Western women dating Muslim men. Disgusting. It really, it's one of the things I have to ask God to heal my heart of because I can't understand how a Christian woman or a Western woman who's identified with Christianity would go out with such men. Now, let me show you what they did to Tommy Robinson. Did you know Tommy Robinson went to Mexico and he was detained? He was locked up and he's now going to be deported. Tommy Robinson, he, he did a short video. I want to show it to you. Now, be careful, ladies. If you have children, he uses the F word quite often. So let me show you that video. Tommy Robinson, just the other day, was flying in with his children to Mexico, Cancun, Mexico, for a vacation. And they arrested him and detained him. And now they're going to deport him. Tommy Robinson, let me get it for you. Let me play the video. Now, ladies, if you have children, okay, cover their ears because he uses the F word. Here it is. K Soko Films uploaded it. Here you go. Uh, many of you know I find it hard to leave England because I can't open a bank account. Can you hear him? I can't rent a house. And so I've been separated from my kids for quite a while. I haven't been really living at Lagos so and my family life. People come to the house, so it's half term. So I get my weeks on with my children. And I'm so excited about it. I've landed at Cancun Airport. My three children have been arrested, I've been separated from the kids, and now I'm being deported as a matter of national security. Man is natural security. Speak about Islam. That's all I've fucking done. Ask yourself what I've done. See? What are my convictions? What I've actually fucking done? What have I done? Spoke by Islam. Spoke by Islam. That's his son. I've been separated from my three fucking kids. My mates here, but I've got a travel with my friend and his children. So he's got my children. I've been put off. Now I'm being deported from Mexico. Like, what the fuck is going on? See? I'm a journalist. Journalist. I'm in divorce. serious issues in the UK. I'm in the house. I'm in the bank account. Can't travel Mexico. Can't travel Mexico. Mexico. I think you've got a fucking cheeky you now. The fucking American border. But yeah, I'm banned from Mexico. Not cleared a crime yet. Been here three times. Never caused a problem. Landed with my children. What was clearly a family holiday. Been arrested, detained, separated from my kids. And now they let me use the phone. I'm allowed my phone call here. They're gonna take the phone again. See yeah, now the guy's telling him something. Okay, so. Okay. He said they separated me from my three kids. This is on Soko Film. He goes, I traveled with a friend and his kids and my three kids, landed in Cancun, Mexico for a vacation. They separated my three kids from me. Now, thankfully, his three kids are with his friend, detained him, and now gonna deport him because he's banned from Mexico and his crime speaking out against Islam. If this is not the sign of God's disgust with the West, I don't know what to tell you because the West was identified with Christianity. When they turned their back on Jesus and blasphemed Jesus and mocked the scripture, God says, okay, I'm going to remove my hand of protection. I'm going to allow the demons. I'm going to allow Satan to bring in his children, his hordes, his religions. So you can learn the fear of the Lord and the difference between following King Jesus, a God of infinite love and compassion, and being subject to these ideologies and worldviews. So there you go, guys. There you go. God's girl. Of course, they're going to consider him racist when he attacks Islam. But Islam is not a race, God's girl. It's an ideology. To liken criticism of Islam to hate crime means that we're falling for the agenda and being brainwashed because criticizing an ideology is not attacking race or ethnicity. Attacking a person for skin color, that's a hate crime. Attacking a person for his ethnicity, that's a hate crime. Attacking an ideology 
that's free speech. So if I attack communism, socialism, fascism in the West, should I be thrown in jail? Islam is much more evil, much more wicked than Nazism, socialism, fascism, communism. Right? So there you go. This is what we have to look forward to if the Lord Jesus tarries. Now that said, do you guys want me now to talk about variant readings of the Quran? Folks, the battle is real. Folks, the danger is real. I don't know if you understand when I tell you that David Wood, <clears throat> Al Fadi, Jay Smith, and we already saw it in the case of Hatun Tash, Hatun Tash, myself, are in danger. Why? Because we are very vocal, and I happen to be the most vocal, I'll insult Muhammad against Islam, and it just takes the right jihadi to be so demonized, like his prophet, to try to stab us or shoot us like they did with Hatun Tash. The danger is real. It's not a joke. Some of you may think that it is funny and entertaining to come live and show your face and identity, but you don't understand people like Tommy Robinson, who sadly isn't a Christian who's fighting for the glory of Jesus Christ, right? People like Somali Christian TV, by criticizing Islam, they put their lives in jeopardy. You saw that madman who tried to stab Hatun. You could see the rage in the way he was stabbing her, but glory to Jesus, our lives are in the hands of Jesus. It wasn't her time to die. Okay, so my point is, what's my point? My point is the battle is real. It's not a joke. We're putting our lives on the line and we're not trying to be heroes. I'm no hero. Without Jesus, I'm a coward. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to fill me and embolden me to never be afraid, but to love the Lord even at the dead. So you guys got to take this seriously. You got to be prayed up. You got to be worshiping the Lord, fasting, praying, studying the word, living it out, be in community, pray as a community, help your brothers and sisters by your deeds, feed the poor, right? Give lodging to the homeless, visit the sick, preach the gospel, support your brothers and sisters in ministry, and don't be afraid and cry for revival because if the nations, if the nations continue to rebel against God, it's going to get worse because Islam is a tool of Satan. Muhammad is one of Satan's favorite children. He's one of the most wicked, filthy, vile antichrists who ever lived. Satan will use the hordes of Islam to murder, to behead, to rape, to enslave, and to torture people. Because we do not fear God. We do not consider Jesus and we don't follow his word. So keep that in mind. It's it's real. So if you love me for the sake of the Lord, bathe me and my daughters in prayer that God will grant them divine, miraculous, physical safety and protection. And the Lord will embolden me not to be afraid of their threats. And if I die, Jesus is worthy. But ask the Lord to give me the power to live for the Lord in holiness and with integrity. So that said, this is what you're up against. Don't fear communism, socialism, fascism, as much as Islam. And don't even fear Islam, because at the end of the day, though Islam may spread, Jesus is alive. Jesus reigns from heaven. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Jesus will return physically and bodily to destroy all wickedness, to erase all evil, to destroy Satan's influence in the world, transform the world to be a world of righteousness, and he will glorify his saints in union with him, and he will live forever and ever. So Jesus cannot be defeated. He cannot lose, and he can't be dethroned. But until he returns, we will suffer persecution, either because we are righteous or because we are rebellious. You either suffer because of your love for Jesus, and God will honor you, or you suffer because of sin, and that's a shame. So are you being persecuted? Are you suffering because you name Jesus? And you walk in holiness, Jesus says rejoice because if you're being persecuted and attacked because you love me and you obey me, great is your reward in heaven. But if you're suffering 
and you're being persecuted because you're in sin and rebellion, shame on you. That's Jesus' discipline on you. So you suffer one of two reasons. You're either suffering because of your sin that you haven't repented and God is disciplining you, chastening you to shame you to repent. And if that's why you're suffering, shame on you, shame on me. May God save me from being a hypocrite. Or you're suffering for the sake of Jesus and righteousness, like Jesus suffered, like the apostles suffered, the prophets, like Joseph. And if you're suffering because you're righteous and you love the Lord and won't compromise, glory to God, the Lord delights in you and he'll exalt you. Right? So I hope I'm not too loud. So with that said, are we ready to talk about Quran variants?